Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church, and welcome those who are here with us in our fellowship center and those who are joining with us online as we continue this message series, Why? As we are asking very deep, um, very uh, eternal questions, um, not necessarily here to provide the answers, but just to see where is God in the midst of this? So it is our honor and joy to be doing that with you uh, side by side. As we also have a lot to celebrate this Sunday, we are presenting third grade Bibles. We are welcoming new members, and so a lot of joy uh, to be had, as always, in this 930 praise service. Just to remind us, we are, of course, a worship plus three church, which means that worship is our foundation. It's our very DNA that gives us the strength and the guidance uh, to live out what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so we hope that you take time not only to register your attendance, but also look through your bulletin, look through our website, firstumc.org, and see those opportunities for us to invite. Uh, for example, we are getting ready for our pumpkin patch, and we'll be having trunk or treat. The candy receptacles are already out, so we ask that you bring individually wrapped candy um, and just see ways that we can invite the community to be a part of that great event. We are also a church that grows, and so we encourage folks to be involved in classes and small groups. Uh, one that we want to lift up is a new uh, eight-week disciple Bible study uh, focusing on Romans, and so it's, it's a great fast-paced but yet still very full and deep, powerful way uh, to be involved in uh, what does Romans mean? for us here in this time. We also have some great other classes like one on creation care. I'll be leading one on universal monsters. And so we try to make a, kind of a wide gamut for folks in their availability and their interest. So we hope that you can be a part of those. And we also serve. And so we take all these things that we receive, but then give them back out to the world and to the community. One of those opportunities will be Engage Lakeland, which is an opportunity for us to partner and be in relationship with the neighborhood in our community. Um, that will be uh, coming up. We invite you to contact Forrest White, who is our director of missions, um, to be involved in that. That will begin, I believe, on the 30th. Uh, September 30th. We'll meet here at the church at 1030 and then go out to the area. It'll just be a great cookout and a fantastic time for fellowship. So again, we really hope that you look through the bulletin, look on your website, see how it is that God is calling us to be a worship plus three church, because in the midst of this, we continue to live in our faith, not just today, but throughout all the days of the week. And so as we open our hearts to God in this time of worship, we look to see where God is present, not only in the midst of our questions, but in the midst of our celebrations and in the midst of our prayers. Welcome to this time of worship. Well, good morning, church. Let's stand together and we'll share in our call to worship, which will be found on our screens. Come in worship. All you who love and serve the Lord, outsiders and insiders, long timers and newcomers, and the in between. Come as you are, for this is God's house, a house of prayer for all people. And God will. Yeah. 
Join this place. Let's turn and let's greet our neighbors this morning. Hey, Ann, how's it going? Very good. This is, this is serious worship today. We already broke a string and everything. It's exciting stuff. How's everybody this morning? Good. It's a, a special day and for many reasons. Uh, we have lots to celebrate in the life of this church today. We're, we're giving away third grade Bibles in a moment, and we've got new members who will be joining. The, the Spirit of God is, is working mightily in this church, and so we're excited. But first, third grade Bibles. How excited are you? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is a great day. It's a special day. And so what we're going to do is uh, when your name is called, if you would please... Come this way, we'll, uh, we'll hand you your Bible. Uh, I'll shake your hand, we'll shake your hand, and then I want you to remain up here because we have a, a few words for you, okay? Does that sound good? All right. Christy, where's Christy? Christy, if you would come forward. That would be great. He Thank told you. me he was gonna do that, so I was waiting for my cue. All right. I am so excited to share this milestone with our friends. I realized this morning when I woke up that several of these children were babies in the church when I started. And with them on this journey has been so amazing and I continue to be excited about their faith journey and how they will continue to grow in God as they have a special Bible in their hands. So, L. Haley. Miller Kylie. All right. <laughs> Braylon Mack. Crosley McIntyre. Evan Michelle. Miller Previtt. Jaden Renwald, Molly Rumpf, 
Colin Vessels. And last but certainly not least, Cody Wilson. Cody, all right. This is great. What a great group. Don't you love it? And uh, let's give a hand to Christy. Isn't she wonderful? We love her. Miss Christy. She does an amazing job here leading our children's ministry, and we're just thrilled. And I just wanted to say just a quick word to all of you. I know it's kind of, you know, being up here is a little nerve-wracking, but I'm so proud of you. And what you have in your hand is a very, very special book. I know you've heard about it before. You've learned some of the Bible being in children's ministry, but the stories in there are amazing. There's adventure. There are love stories. Are kind, I mean, it's amazing all the adventurous things that you'll find in the Bible, but most importantly, what you're going to discover in that amazing book is how much God loves you. God loves each and every one of you and created you special and has a plan for your life. And I'm just so excited. And it's going to be very exciting to see you grow uh, and evolve and grow in your faith. It's just going to be great. And I'm so excited. You mind if I say a prayer for you right now? That'd be all right? Okay. I'm glad you said yes. Okay. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much for these third graders. Oh, the hope that's in their eyes. Oh, I'm reminded of, Lord, what you said to us, that unless you can become like a little child, come to me like a child with that faith and wonder and trust, you'll never understand. You'll never be able to enter the kingdom. Lord, these kids have so much to teach us. So Lord, may they teach us those lessons. But I pray for each one of them today and who they are and the special ways you've gifted them. I pray for their family and their parents and may they come to, to grow in you and grow in your love even more. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, go back to your seats. Thank you. So as we continue that joy and celebration, we now want to welcome uh, those who will be joining as new members today. We invite them to come forward as well as the first friends and those who will be introducing them. Um, kind of like that faith as a child, we celebrate that time in which these individuals are making that next great step. And again, you as the congregation being there as the means of support, as we see how all of us, no matter what age, give those opportunities to continue our faith journey. So Mr. Sam, Reverend Sam, thank you for being here with us. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you and you to know how blessed we are to have this opportunity to honor and, com and commitment that you have made as you become a member of, of our church. Welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce to you and I'm going to ask them to raise their hands so that we'll know who they are. Susan Harvey. Susan is part of the Matt and Lori Brown family and has been attending here for several years. She loves to sew, photography, and being creative. Susan is looking forward to going on a mission trip and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. One of her goals is to encourage at least one child in the Methodist Children's Home. And we welcome Susan. <laughs> and Joy Starling. Joy is the son of Diane, who you'll meet in a few minutes. It's the son of Diane and Mike Starling. He enjoys watching sports, movies, and enjoying time outside with friends. Mike studied and played baseball at Stanford University. Currently, he is in sales at a mental health company. Mike looks forward to becoming involved in the ministries of the church. Welcome, Joey. And Diane Starling mother of Joey. <laughs> Diana is a recent retiree from, with Polk County Public Schools. She enjoys spending time with family, walking, hiking, biking, and anything on or in the water. Diana, Diana is looking forward 
to volunteering the local and global missions, and especially excited to volunteer at NOAA's Lending, and welcome, Diane. Mm -hmm. And Joanne Stidham. Joanne is married to John and has two sons and one grandson. She attended Southern Methodist University and University of Oklahoma and is a retired speech and language pathologist. Joanne enjoys traveling, reading, and playing with her grandson, Thomas. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you, Sam. So Joey, Diana, Joanne, Susan, uh, as we discussed to Explore First, one of those great steps that you are taking um, becoming a member of this congregation are the vows in which you are sharing your gifts and talents and commitment um, as all of us are in the way that God calls us. And so as you take this step, we have these questions for you. On behalf of the whole church, we ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. And according to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in this world? There we go. There's more than one way to amplify a voice. So I have some questions for you all as well. As members of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And as you all are joining this congregation, I have a response for all of us as well. So siblings, I commend to you in your love and care these persons whom we this day receive into the membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And let us join in this response together. We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's holy church and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ. Okay, so I welcome these folks into the membership of the church. You may welcome them. And so, friends, it is now that we move into this time of prayer. And we bring into prayer all the celebrations. And it has been a morning to celebrate with new folks joining the church with our third grade Bibles. But it is also a time where we bring into prayer those things that we might have sorrows or those people in our church congregation who might need that extra care and attention uh, from this week. And so with that, we have one family that we want to lift up in prayer during their time of grief. So we want to lift up the family of Annie Oakley Parsons, who passed away on September 12th, surrounded by family who was expressing their love. So she is survived by her husband of 64 years, Jim, their children, Chris, Michelle, and Tim, their spouses, seven grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren, as well, many other family members. 
So Annie's life was celebrated yesterday in the chapel. And so we want to continue to surround their family with prayer at this time. So friends, may we take all the joys we bring into the space, all the concerns and this family, and let us go to God together in prayer. Let us pray. So, O oh Lord, we come to you in prayer with both joys and sorrows from our previous week. We greet with thanks the beauty of a new day, the joy of experiencing your creation in all around us. Our hearts break for those in great need, both near and far. We pray for those in grief in our congregation that you may comfort those in need. We pray for those experiencing economic difficulties, food insecurity, homelessness in our community, state, and country, and around the world. And we pray for and we work for change. We pray for those affected by the extensive flooding in Libya. We grieve the great loss of life. And we pray for your comfort and for your strength for those left behind. May the church find ways to respond with your hope and your grace to those in need. Lord, we pray all of this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And so now, friends, as we come into this time of offering, we know that we give back to God out of the great gratitude, knowing that all that we have, it all comes from God. And so as we look ahead into this fall season, we know we are preparing for that season when our front lawn becomes busy with many things, with the pumpkin patch and then with trunk or treat and with more things into the fall. And so it's an exciting time, but it's a time we know that those things are ways that we outreach. It's ways that we connect with our community. And so we know those are beautiful things that we do, and our generosity is part of making that connecting with our community possible. So friends, may we keep those excited and those mission-minded hearts as we give back to our God together.
give me vision to see things like you do. Amen and amen. Well, I need to announce uh, before I go any further that uh, there is going to be a reception for these third graders and getting their Bibles right after this service uh, in the Wesley Center. And so come and join them and congratulate them. It's a special day for them. So I encourage you to do that right after this service. We are very proud of them. You probably noticed that um, I sound a little different today. One of the great things the school system provides are a bunch of viruses and germs (laughs) when kids come home from school. And and Paul gave that gift to me. They're like Petri dishes, you know? And uh, and so I have this bug. I'm on antibiotics, but um, I'm still fighting this bug. But they say 80% of success is showing up, amen? So I'm here. And I know the the Holy Spirit is going to provide the extra 20%, right? Very good. I would remind you there is a devotional guide in your bulletin, and that's, that's there every week for you to use. Uh, it's a way to live with the message uh, individually or in a small group. Maybe you have a small group that meets in, in your neighborhood, or of course here in the church we have small groups that use it. I encourage you to use it. It's a helpful way to, to live with the message, as I said. Also, we're doing something different and new with this new series, Why? And that is uh, on Thursdays at 7, beginning this Thursday, I'll uh, go live on Facebook and answer some more of your questions related to this series. And you'll be able to go back and and listen or watch the recording if you aren't able to join us at 7 o'clock on Thursday. So that'll be part of this series as well, and we encourage you to join us. Uh, Let's be in an attitude of prayer together. Eternal God, we do thank you for the, the gift of this day, the gift of this music. Oh, the joy of these children receiving their Bibles, new members, Oh, it is a joy and a pleasure, Lord, to be part of this amazing church, and we sense your spirit working through it all the time. And now, Lord, you have given to me the amazing privilege and responsibility of preaching your word to these my friends and your servants, Lord, a task I always need your strength in order to do, especially today, Lord. So, Lord, I ask you to speak to me and through me in such a way that all of us do receive a word from you that will make a difference to our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As I said, I'm in uh, the middle of a series entitled Why? And this, the seed of this series was a, a question I posted on Facebook some time ago. And that question was this, what question would you like a sermon to answer? And after just a, a day or so, I received over a hundred responses, all kinds of questions. And of course, last week we tackled the very big one. Why does God allow suffering? Why did God allow that to happen? The theodicy question. And my answer was this, everything that happens to us is not God's will, but God has a will and everything that happens to us. And that will is to turn our trouble into triumph. And so if you didn't hear that message or watch that message, I encourage you, we provide transcripts of the message. You can get that as you leave or go on the website or YouTube and listen to it because I believe it'll be a helpful message for you if you struggle with that question of suffering, which I think many of us do. But today... We're going to tackle what was the most popular question listed on Facebook when I posed that question, and that is, why do my prayers go unanswered? Of course, it it came in different forms. Do I pray to God or do I pray to Jesus? How do I know if it's God's voice instead of my voice? Can I change God's mind? Why are my prayers going unanswered? Those are great questions. 
And I'm sure many of you have those same questions. Now, if you grew up in the church, you know that prayer is important. You were taught throughout your life, through Sunday school and through church, if you need something, pray about it. If you need guidance, pray about it. If you need strength and power, pray about it. And I imagine there are some of you here in worship today, and one of the big reasons why you're here is that you're praying for something to happen in your life. But maybe you struggle with it because you're not getting the results you want, the results you're looking for. And you're frustrated because sometimes you come across those particular Christians who act like they're eating uh, cornflakes with God at their breakfast table every morning. And they seem so at peace all the time and they hear from God all the time. They're like, what am I doing wrong? Or you come across those Christians who smile and they come up to you. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. And they say, oh, the best thing happened to me. God is so good. I went to Publix and I prayed for a parking space and I got one right in the front. Isn't God great? And you're thinking, what in the world? And you're rolling your eyes thinking, my gosh, I'm praying for this serious thing. And yet I I see these people and I talk to these people who think God is answering their prayer. and, And so what am I doing wrong? I understand your frustration. I've prayed for marriages to be saved and they were not. I've prayed for people to be healed and they still died. I've prayed for doors of ministry to be open for me in the church and they've been slammed in my face. I've prayed for it. Sometimes my prayers, I don't know if you can relate to this, my prayers feel like I'm, I'm throwing little rubber balls against the doors of heaven. Bow, bow, and they're bouncing back. And maybe you've done the same thing. Maybe you've prayed for a promotion and you didn't get it. Maybe you've prayed for a job and you didn't get it. Maybe you've prayed for your marriage and your marriage is is still really, really bad and not very healthy. And you've prayed and prayed and you're thinking, is God listening? And you're really frustrated. Maybe you think you're doing something wrong. Maybe you think, well, maybe my phrasing is not right. Or or maybe I need to pray on my knees. Or or, or maybe I need to sing the right songs in worship before I pray. Or maybe I need to pray in Jesus' name as I end my prayer. Or if this is God's will, I'll end my... Maybe there's some kind of right incantation that I can do to get my prayers answered. And something will be different. Well, before I go any further, I want to say this to you. Sometimes God wants to answer our prayers, but our rebellion prevents it from happening, right? I mean, if you're praying for God to hold your marriage together and you or your spouse are still cheating, don't blame God. If you're you're praying for a relative who has lung disease and he keeps smoking like a chimney, don't blame God. God never goes against free will. I don't care how desperate that prayer is. There are also times when God answers prayer, and honestly, we're just too stubborn to see the answer right in front of us. Kind of like that old story about the the guy that was experiencing a a flood, and the, the water was rising, 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 and it was on the roof of his house, and he prayed for God to rescue him. And along came a raft, and a jet ski, and a boat, and to each one he said, God's gonna save me, no thank you. Well, he died went to heaven and said, God, why didn't you save me? God said, I sent you a raft, a boat, and a jet ski. Why didn't you take them? You know, sometimes answered prayers are not so esoteric or mystical in nature. Sometimes God does answer prayer in very practical, common sense ways. Like, you know, if you're praying to lose weight and someone gives you a free membership, but you never use it, don't blame God if you still haven't lost weight. You know, if you're, you're trying your best to get healthy and you never exercise, well, don't blame God for that. And of course, there's a different category too, what I call gawk prayers. God only knows. There are specific prayers that we pray and pray and pray. Maybe we've prayed all of our lives and we think we don't have an answer. And honestly, on this side of heaven, we won't know the answer. But all those disclaimers aside, it is true. It is real. It's a struggle that for many of us, when we pray and we pray and we pray for something, we don't get the answer we need or we don't get any answer at all. And we think God is not listening. And it's very frustrating. And I found that this issue is one of the biggest issues for Christians is unanswered prayer. 
And it's especially frustrating when we see what, what Jesus actually said to us in the gospel of Mark, when he says this, see if this looks familiar. I tell you this, Jesus says, if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted from your place and hurled into the sea and has no inward doubts, but believes what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. I tell you, Whenever you ask in prayer and whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Amen and amen, right? That's what it says. That's what it says. And I believe in prayer and I believe in the power of prayer. And I believe that prayer is transforming and prayer can cause miracles to happen. Yet our experience often shows us and tells us that not every mountain is moved when we ask for it to be moved. And maybe there's a mountain in your life and you're desperate for it to be moved and you've prayed and prayed for it to be moved and you don't know why. So how do we deal with all those feelings? How do we deal with all those struggles? What is going on? Well, here's the issue. And I know this is gonna be a big shock to you, so you may wanna write this down. Sometimes God answers our prayers in a way we don't expect him to. Sometimes God's answer to our prayers are on a different timetable. And sometimes God's answers to our prayer don't align with our wishes. But that does not mean that God does not answer prayer. So this morning, what I wanna do is I wanna share with you, in my experience, as I've struggled with this question, and in my experience of ministry and dealing with parishioners and, and members of churches who've struggled with this question, and just generally people in general, I wanna share with you how God typically answers prayer, how God typically does it. And I believe that as I share this with you, you'll find that maybe you can get unstuck today from your frustration of unanswered prayer. First of all, sometimes God says, go. Can you say that? Go. Sometimes God says go. And we love that. That means God is saying, yes, I agree. I grant this, this answer to your prayer. I am with you. I'm going to do it. And sometimes that's how it happens. It does. Sometimes we pray for a job and the next day we get a job. Sometimes we pray for that soulmate and, and, and we pray and pray and the next day that soulmate appears and it's wonderful and it's great. And by a show of hands, how many of you wish prayer always worked like that? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, what child does not want a parent to always say yes, right? Good third graders, you always want your parents to say yes, yes. <laughs> Paul always wants me to say yes. Daddy, mommy said no. Will you say yes? Happens all the time. But let me ask you this. Is it a good idea to always say to your kids yes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we could have predicted that one. <laughs> Too often we think, I love it. I'm getting call and response from third graders. This is great. <laughs> This is church. Too often we think that when, when God doesn't answer our prayers when we want it and how we want it, that God does not answer prayer. And that's simply not true because sometimes God says, whoa, which means yes, but not at this time. Because God not only, God only wants to give us what is best for us, but God also wants to give it to us when it is best for us. That's important to hear. You know, football coaches know this. How many of you love college football? It's, uh, it's, it's good stuff. The Gators actually won. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. See, sometimes, no, never mind. Um, no, scratch that. That's, anyway. I'm not even a Gator fan, but anyway. Uh, but I'm proud of y'all. That's great. Um, but sometimes football coaches know this. They, they do. And, and that's why they redshirt freshmen. Because along comes this student, this athlete, who has so many gifts and so many skills, but a wise coach will often not play them yet because they know that if you give that player everything that they want, two things will happen, probably. One, it'll go to their head and they'll be ruined, or they'll have a terrible experience and their spirit will be broken. Sometimes we're just not mature enough to handle the answer that God wants to give us at a later time. And that's happened so many times in my life. So many times in my life. 
I've wanted something. And, and God said, listen, you're just not ready for it. You're just not ready for it. And it is so true. I mean, one of the battles that we face as parents uh, oftentimes is the battle of not giving our children too much at one time. Does that sound familiar? I mean, you know, it's good to teach our children to drive, but maybe when they're six years old, that's not a good idea. I mean, I have a Jeep Wrangler. I love my Jeep Wrangler. It's a black Jeep Wrangler. I look so cool in it. You know, I, I, it's a midlife crisis. I, I could do it a lot worse ways, couldn't I? But, and those of you who have Jeeps, I'll give you the Jeep wave. There you go. Yeah, do. Aren't I cool? That's all another sermon. <laughs> but when, when, we, when we finish, when we drive somewhere and, and, and Paul gets out, he always has to stop and I'm in a rush and he always has to stop in the driver's seat. And go, Daddy, when are you going to teach me how to drive? And I say, Paul, not just yet. Sometimes God answers yes, but not on our timetable. And we need to remember that. Sometimes we just have to wait. And, and you know what? We can live with those two answers, can't we? We can live with go, indeed. And we can, we can live with woe, but it's the next one we have many problems with. And that's when God says, no. And no. oh no. You know, here's the truth. Maybe God has answered your prayer <laughs> and you just don't like the answer, right? <laughs> and that's true. That happens sometimes. You know, God can say no, because guess what? God is God and we are not, amen? And God sees things that we don't see. And you know, in the Bible, God often said no to the greatest people of faith, greatest biblical characters. I mean, take, for example, the apostle Paul. Amazing, an amazing disciple of Jesus Christ. I mean, his story is remarkable. Amazing. But you know, as some of you biblical scholars know, Paul struggled with the thorn in his side. And, and scholars have speculated what that was, that he had a hearing problem or a sight problem or he had gout or whatever. But did, whatever it was, did you know that Paul prayed, and he would say this desperately, I prayed for three times for God to take away this thorn in my flesh. Three times I asked God to take it away. And how did God answer? Do you remember? In 2 Corinthians, God answered this, said Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. God said to Paul, listen, I'm not gonna answer this prayer the way you want it, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'm gonna give you the grace to cope with it. I'm gonna give you the grace to strengthen you through it. I'm gonna give you grace to do that. Now why? Who knows? Maybe God wanted to keep Paul humble. Maybe God had a larger plan, but why would God answer that prayer that way? Because here's the big truth, folks, and this won't be a shock to you either. God's perspective is bigger and better than ours. Here's the thing. Here's what God has that we don't have. God has a bigger picture. It's like the prophet Isaiah says. I love these words. This plan of mine is not what you would work out. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours, for my ways are higher than your ways. So often, folks, we don't realize the consequences, and this is important, we don't realize the consequences of God saying yes to a prayer, because we only see a particular amount in our life. I mean, prayer has what I like to call a chain reaction, a change reaction, a ripple effect. I mean, when I pray for something, I don't know how that, the answer to prayer is going to affect me 10 years from now. And when I pray for something, I don't know how it's going to affect my family down the road or for my friends or how it's going to affect the church. I don't know how it's going to affect me at all. And because God knows, God can see that change, God can see that ripple effect, sometimes God says no. No. And if we knew everything that God knew, we would probably say no to. For example, the Apostle Paul. Let's bring up Paul again. You know, Paul desperately wanted to go to Spain. If you read in his epistles, he wanted to go to Spain to spread the gospel in Spain. He so wanted to go to Spain. And God said, no, you're going to Rome. You're going to Rome. And do you remember what happened to Paul when he went to Rome? He was imprisoned. He was chained up. 
And maybe you wonder, well, Charlie, why, why would God set up Paul to fail? This is a, a great preacher of the gospel, someone who was so in, inspired. Why would God set up Paul to fail? But do you remember what happened? It was in prison that Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And, and if Paul had gone to Spain and had never been arrested, maybe we would never have the New Testament. God sees things we don't see. God knows things that we don't know. And it doesn't matter how eloquent or, or desperate our prayers are. We have to remember that. So I've learned that that when it comes to prayer, generally speaking, there, there are two questions in mind, in God's mind, and here they are. What is for our good and what is for God's glory? What is for our good and what is for God's glory? Now, one of the most interesting chapters in the Bible is Hebrews 11. I love that chapter, called the Hall of Faith, and you've read it. By faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Moses did this. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. It's powerful. But sometimes we miss two verses in that chapter that are equally powerful. This is what they say. This is so important. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better. Did you see that? God had planned something better. Yes, there are times in our lives when God says no and, and we are disappointed and we are hurt, but we don't realize that God is planning something better in our lives. You know, if you ever get down or disappointed about God not answering your prayers, here's, here's some advice I have for you. Go to a, a high school reunion and take a look at some of those folks that you wanted to marry way back when <laughs> and how they look now and how they are now. Let me tell you, in those moments, you'll say, thank God for unanswered prayer, all right? <laughs> And, and when I look at my beautiful, stunning, amazing wife, is this being recorded? Great. <laughs> amazing wife. Uh, but seriously, when I, when I look at her, uh, and I mean, it's beauty and the beast. I, I married up like crazy, all right? And, and when I look at her and I think of all those, all those other people I maybe could have married, I thank God he said no to my prayer. And tell you, I'll be honest, there are some prayers that I wish God hadn't said no to, but there are many more prayers, and see if you can relate to this, many more prayers I'm thrilled God said no to. Amen? You know, it's so easy to have faith in God when God says yes, isn't it? But I'll tell you this, faith Faith is not trusting in God when he says yes. True faith is trusting in God when even he says no, and we trust that he has our best interests at heart. But maybe that's not enough for you today. I get it. Maybe you're sitting here and saying, Charlie, that sounds wise and that sounds good, but I'm hurting in worship today. I'm sitting here and I've prayed for something and I've prayed for something and I've prayed for something and it hasn't come to pass. And I am worried and I am frantic and I'm upset and I'm filled with anxiety and, and, I'm, and maybe some of you are depressed about it and you're really hurt. And maybe you think, what about that scripture you mentioned earlier, Charlie? Where Jesus said, if, if you pray and you really believe that mountain will be moved, it will be moved. What about that, Charlie? Well, let's revisit that. Because in, in, in first century Jewish culture, moving mountains was a figure of speech that really meant removing difficulty. Removing difficulty. So here's what I believe. When, when Jesus said that, he wasn't saying, well, just pray for whatever you want. And if you really have enough faith, you'll get it. Jesus was praying. Jesus was saying this. Whenever you pray from your heart, I will give you the strength you need to face that difficulty, to face that challenge. You know, and there's an old saying, and some of you came to worship to, he to hear just this. There's an old saying, and it sounds cliche, and it sounds cheesy, but it's true, I believe. Oftentimes, when, when, when God closes one door, he opens another. I believe that. I really do. 
But here's the problem that, that, I, that I've experienced in my own life and, and the problem that many Christians have experienced. And, and many people get stuck in their faith because when that door shuts, all they do in prayer is stare at that door. And how can you go through a new door when you're just staring at that one door that's been shut? And, and oftentimes, epiphany happens in life when we change the way we pray and say, Lord, I'm tired of looking at that, that door that's been shut. Here's what I'm going to do. Would, would you guide me and lead me to this new door that you have for me, this, this new beginning that you want for me, this new place in my life that I know you want me to be in? But here's the thing, in order for that to happen, in order for that to happen, and listen closely, we have to see prayer as more than just putting our order into God. You see, prayer is not bending God's will to our will. Prayer is bending our will to God's will. Prayer doesn't change God, it changes us. In prayer, we don't get what we want from God. We get something better. We get what we need. And as you pray more, enter the heart of God more, you'll see that. I recall being on vacation when I was a teenager. And I got up early because I wanted to paddle in a canoe around a lake. And, and so I did. I got up early and, and did. It was just me. And I got in this canoe and... I started paddling around. It was very calm and very peaceful. And then I did something very dumb. I, I dropped the oar in the water. And, and I'm looking around at the shoreline and there's nobody. It was early. I'm, I'm going to be stuck out here forever. But finally, I saw this man walk close to a dock and I said, hey, help me, help me, help me. And he had this posture, I'll never forget. He had this posture like someone had done this before, like a tourist or whatever. And he went like this. I said, help me. And then he got a, a, a piece of long rope and he threw it out to me and said, pull yourself in. He tied it around the dock and just left. <laughs> he was frustrated, I guess. So something interesting happened though. As I began to pull myself closer to the dock, there was an optical illusion and it was the way the, the sun was shining. I don't know, it was very strange. But as I began to pull on that rope, it was as if... I was pulling that dock closer to me. But what was I really doing? I was, I was pulling myself closer to the dock. And that's what prayer is. The more we pull in prayer, and we go into the heart of God in prayer, no matter what it is, and our frustrations and all of that, we get closer to the heart of God and we get more understanding and we can discern, we can discern God's voice between, between our voice and God's voice. And we get that strength we need. We need to remember that the same God that created the universe is waiting to hear from us. The same God, the same God, the part of the Red Sea is waiting to hear from us. The same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is waiting to hear from us. And when he hears from us, remember, he always answers prayer and he always keeps your best interest at heart. And this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Let's pray. Eternal God, I pray for everyone in here today. I know there are many hearts that are heavy. They've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And it doesn't seem to be an answer. Lord, I, I ask that your spirit would come alongside of them and you would take their hand and you would put their arm around them and they would hear from you in a special way that you're never going to leave them that you will answer their prayer in some way, that you haven't abandoned them because you haven't, Lord. Help us to see, Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways. But keep following you because you have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? It's in Christ's name we pray. 
Amen. Let's stand as we respond. Thank you, Pastor Charlie. Thank you so much for coming to worship today. Thanks for bearing through my raspy voice. But uh, I hope this has been a time of inspiration, of encouragement for you. Receive this benediction. And I may that mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you also. And the love of God, our Heavenly Father, abide with you this day and throughout this week. May the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit fall fresh upon you. And the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ go with you and sustain you, both now and forevermore. Amen.